Jazzcast Pros. Greetings, folks. I want to be real. Uh, as you can hear, I'm a little stuffy. I'm getting over this flu. It is no joke, by the way. And I had a flu in 20 years. I want to talk to you about something that I experienced while going through this recovery. And it involves us as men, fathers, talking to our children about self-esteem, self-worth, love, and overstanding the creator in you, the God in you. I have a 13-year-old son, well-mannered, hot-tempered as any other teen, but self-controlled for the most part. I had to talk to him about his self-esteem, something that we don't do often and we need to do more often, considering that we are surrounded by so much sorrow and hopelessness in the media, in the music, even in the clothes we wear. Bear with me here because this is something that we as fathers must, I mean, I urge you, must do to our children who are entering adolescence. We need to talk more about self-esteem, self-worth, feeling loved and appreciated, the gratitude that you are here. You are here with me, enjoying life, growing. Greetings and welcome to another session of Father Torch, the podcast that help you new and renew fathers, cope with the anxieties, the stress of fatherhood, so that you can be the father or dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of Abimelech Foundation, an artist, a father of nine. My mission is to help you reclaim the power and to ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. Let me share with you something here, a discussion that I had with my son. He's the youngest of nine. And I asked my son this morning, how was his day so far? What's the plan? He gave me the usual spell, you know, learn from today, do better tomorrow, you know, just there. That's not usually a sign or a warning or anything to be concerned with. Your typical 13-year-old, you know. Nothing matters, can't show my true feelings, you know, things that society show us to do. Because it's okay, again, it's okay for us to express anger, but not any other emotions, especially as a young black male. But today, it was in my spirit to talk to him directly. He's entering manhood, adolescent stages, the time of confusion, insecurity as well as blurred visions of future. My son expressed to me that he just randomly took a test, <laughs> took a test on his phone about um, his learning ability. And the test result came back stating that he was, that he has a learning disability, ADHD. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing it right. And at first I laughed, like, <laughs> really? Then I asked him, why did you take that test? Why did you just randomly select it to do this test? He said, you didn't know. He thought, you know, it's just something to do, and he did it. So I asked him, do you think you have a disability in your learning? I don't know. You know, the typical answers. But we have to pry as fathers. We have to pry. So I kept prying and asked him, do you feel you have difficulty learning. He said, not really. I think I'm average. And I said, why do you think you're average? He says, there's people smarter than me. I know they can do better than me. So, you know, I'm average. I pondered. I, I really sat down and pondered on what he just said to me. Are you saying that people are smarter than you or you feel that you are dumber than them? He said, I don't understand. But you think you're average? He said, yes. Hmm. Is that a safe number? Is that the safe answer? He says, well, I think I'm average because, you know, everybody else does things differently, you know, and I'm not them. This is when it starts to get a little deeper because I start to ask questions that pertain solely to him. What do you think of yourself? Do you love yourself? 
do you see yourself in the future? I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I want to be a pilot. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. That's real good. You know what you have to do? You know the steps to get in there? Not really, but, you know, I'm willing to learn. Okay. At least you have some optimistic thinking about yourself. Okay. But what do you know or feel about you? He paused. He said, you know, I'm all right. I said, that's it? You all right? He says, that I'm not you. I don't um, know what to say or, or I don't always have a word for what I feel. So do you think I'm better than you? He paused, says nothing, look out the window. <laughs> and I had to give him the uncomfortable conversation about what it is that he is worthy of. This morning, my son believed at one part that he was not worthy of a lot of things that I do for him and the things that is expected of him. His self-esteem allowed him to think that he was second best from the second row. And when I say that, I'm not talking about the competitiveness or ranking or status in the world, but just self-worth. It disturbed me. It bothered me beyond belief. How can I sit here and advocate for fathers? And I did not see that his self-esteem was struggling. I had to sit down for 40 minutes this morning and truly, truly talk with him. Heart to heart, connecting. I had to express my vulnerability in a loving manner, embracing. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to do more of that. But I had to verbally show him as well as allow him to absorb what I was talking about. I told him I loved him. I need to love him because he thinks what I can do for him or it's my duty to do so. I love him because he's a part of me and I am a part of him. I do this because I genuinely love you. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose other than ourselves. I spoke about how worthy he is of my love and my overstanding. He is worthy of my throne, above my throne. And why that he is worthy? Because of the God in him, the God in me. And how little of faith that we need to increase his self-esteem. No more than a mustard seed. That I am closer to him as the Lord is close to us than our own juggler vein. I say this to him this morning because I want him to know that he is worthy beyond my love. And I am truly grateful that he's in my life. I want him to know, not because something is wrong, that he's doing bad, that something is wrong with him, or he's wrong to think the way he thinks, He's not blind. He sees the sorrow in the world. He sees the pain. It's all over us. He sees the wears and tears and the ass whoopings I get daily just to provide food on his table. I didn't pressure him or burden him about what it take for me to put the clothes on his back. I expressed to him, it's not because of you I do this. It's because you are me and me is you. As loving as I am, I do it to protect you always because your growth is important. You are worthy. You are intelligent. You are not a mistake. I had to embrace and show him that the creator of life, the ancestors, did not make a mistake. And although this world is full of sorrows and full of pain and hopelessness and disparity, what you feel is true. There's a lot of that. But you are not that. It's important why you must feed these realms, your emotion, your physical, your mental, and your spiritual. There's a reason why, as a man, as a black man especially, why we must keep these things in balance. 
why we don't keep certain company, why we try our best not to stay away from these vampires who will suck you out, drain you, just because they will make you feel unworthy where they need you to live. Without you, they can exist. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out Living the Front Seat Life podcast. That's my podcast. I'm Coach Kelly Marie. I talk all about my journey as a Black woman living with mental illnesses. I have great guests. We talk about everything from food, being medicinal, how to set boundaries, how to say no, how to get therapy, and how to talk to your family and friends about mental health. I'm Living the Front Seat Life podcast. You can find us on the JazzCast Pros Network, and we're listening to this podcast right now. Be the light. Being a father, and even as sick as I am right now, our job is never turned down, took a vacation off, a day off, not to say mothers do. But as men, going through our own struggle, we must not forget Our children struggle too. And through our hardship and through our achievements, they struggle still. No matter how much you provide and how much you do for them, if you do not connect with them, you are basically raising a time bomb, especially in today's world. Today's world is filled with so much hopeless distractions, worthless riches, and an abundance of ignorance. That if you're not careful and mindful and aware, you lose your child in so many ways and directions. I told and expressed to my son the God in him, the beauty in him, what I see and what he should recognize. Of course, it was, yes, dad, I hear you. I can even give you back what you just said. But I know there's something that I must be consistent with and something that I need to be adamant, not overbearing, not guilt tripping, not always using the slippery slope arguments to get my point. It's more than simply just being real, but being authentic, authentic to who you are, authentic to what is expected of him. And if you don't pour into your child, do not expect a hefty blossom to return to you. I never had that father to talk to me that way, to give me what's my self-worth, to let me know that it's okay, that I am enough. My self-esteem wasn't the best. Yes, I was around people that was, is depressed and have a lot of different mental illnesses, struggles, you name it. I didn't have that male bond that was blood to me at least. And the ones that wasn't, they did their best. And I'm grateful nonetheless. But I was determined to change that. I learned from my mistakes. I learned from my trials and error, from all that I have endured, all that I thought was best. They may have been, who knows? The thing is, I have no regrets. I love me. I love my children. And I know what kind of world we live in. And I know the harm and the dangers is everywhere. Everywhere, excuse me. But it doesn't stop me from living. I express to my son the power of freedom and also the power of slavery. Because we don't see the chains and we don't hear the rattle of those chains. It doesn't mean that we are free. I spoke to him on the theory of plantation settings, theories of trapment, emotional trauma. I really got into more about the word trauma. We use that a lot, especially nowadays. Trauma has a double-edged sword. Life is trauma. The things we experience in this life is trauma. Anything we deal with growth, upliftment, embracing, Deals with trauma, growing, or what do you call it? Growing pains. It's the reason why they say that. 
if a plant can scream out for busting out of this shell and digging its roots and expanding into the earth before piercing the surface, that would be considered trauma. What's bad about trauma is when you go through certain amount of trauma, chronic, without any lesson learned or a cause, now it becomes detrimental, a repeated, tormented cycle that you cannot escape unless you learn the lesson. I exposed him to these things, and I taught him as much as he can understand about trauma, especially emotional trauma. Emotions is something that clouds all realms, as I spoke before, like a fog. It weakens the spirit, confuses the mind, and the physical follows. We must talk to our sons. We must talk to our daughters. We must talk to them, I beg of you. My fathers, my men, my brothers, sons, communicate, connect, talk to your youth. Don't wait for them to come to you. Talk to them. No more. Talk to them. No more neglecting. No more talking about your pain and the traumas you go through. Talk to them. Talk to your youth. Express yourself. Express your wrongs. Express your rights. Grow together. Show proper gratitude to the ancestors, to the creator, the God in you. He did not abandon you. You simply stop listening to him. This is not about fear tactics. This is not about mind trickery. This is me being, I'm sick, yes, but being truthful and sharing a little of my experience this morning and woking me up to a big problem. Our sons are depressed, alone, low self-esteem, withdrawn, angry, confused. So much of them out here that can identify what I just mentioned, but yet has no problem, no problem causing destruction even to themselves. They're going through things. <clears throat> they have things to say. Don't disregard them. Don't hurt them. Be all that you can be to them. Be everything that you can be that's within your power. The Most High has not left us transition. My kings, my warriors, transition so that your offspring can be great, strong, wise, and powerful, that they can keep passing the torch. This is why I name this Father Torch. Being Father is the highest authority you can have on earth. It's an honor to be a father. It's a responsibility. It's an obligation that without rewards, there's no gimmick, there's no glamity, there's no shiny thing at the end. The only thing you have is the honor, your child above your throne, to show your worthiness in its fullness. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you for being here. This podcast is about uplifting fathers, not about friendship or being the best friend. I welcome and value friendship, relationship more, allies even better. I do this because I love what I do. I also love my children and my family, my friends too. This is important that we as men band together, not because of ranks and status, riches, and worldly happiness. Because if you're not happy with you, you cannot be happy with anyone else. That includes children and wife too. Too many times we play ourselves and we think we are happy because we have material things. Nothing, nothing is further from the truth. We are not material things. We are the earth. We are the universe. We are all connected to the creator of life. And until we embrace that, we will never see it. But we can start, even right now. Look at your children, look into their eyes, talk to them, connect yourself to them. 
overstand them as a person, as a being, talk to them, not at them, reason with them, not demand them, respect them, and love them, just as you want them to do the same. Join me again next Sunday. Let us prepare for prepare for what can happen and what will happen. And that is to be a better dad. You know, you can be the dad you wish you had. I want you to do more. I want you to be better. Be better. Be better. Humble. Loved. Love your children. Love yourself. Be aware of the dangers and prepare them for it. Teach them. Don't down them. Some taunt to them. Big up them. Big up their self-esteem. Lodge them up. Give them strength. Thank you for listening to me. Follow me. FatherTorch.com. We are here every other Sunday. And we will be embarking on a lot of subjects. Things that we mostly don't talk about. And we usually run from. Peace. If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high quality recordings, regardless of your or your guest internet quality. And it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. It's high tech, but easy to use. And unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer and your guests don't either. Riverside.fm is the leading platform to record studio quality audio or video podcast. They even have a really cool video editor to help you make content for social media. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. The link is in the show notes.